Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a decorative kitchen towel that really is cute and it's going to make a great gift for someone. So let's take a look at the towel here. Okay, I've selected a green towel, a, a green and white fabric border with three rows of rickrack. And then also at the top, there's this circle with rickrack around it and a double button for decoration. Okay, now let's look at one more towel here. This is one that I made. Now it only has one fabric strip at the bottom because I didn't want to cover up this cute novelty section. And I had owl fabric to match it. So the loop and the bottom fabric match. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I really wasn't happy with the white rickrack on this, but I only have one store to shop in in this town for rickrack, and they were out of it. I wanted blue or purple, so make sure your rickrack will, will stand out, okay? All right, so, but I'm gonna show you how to make the three row border and the double button here. Okay, so let's go over what you need. Now, your kitchen towel, I wouldn't have it much smaller than 15 inches by 25. Some of the ones I'm using are 27 inches by 16, but I wouldn't go any smaller than this. I used quarter inch wide rickrack. You could use half inch if you like. You'll need one large button and one small button. For the loop, cut out a strip four and a half inches long by one and a half inches wide. Then cut out two circles of your fabric that are five and a half inches in diameter. Cut out one circle of cotton batting that's five and a half inches in diameter. Then for the strip size, you're gonna need to measure the width of your towel from one side to the other. Then add two inches to it and that will be the length of your strip. Okay? Now cut two strips one and a half inches wide by the length that you came up with and then cut one two and a half inches wide by whatever length you came up with. Okay? Alright, so take your towel and measure the length. This one happens to be 27 inches long. So it is 13 and a half inches in the middle. So find whatever middle point is in your towel and then place a ruler across that middle point and with your rotary cutter, cut it in half. So now you have two towels that you get to decorate. Okay, so out of one towel, you get to make two. So you can kind of see how inexpensive this is. All right, so just set your two towel halves aside. Now you're going to make your loop. Take that four and a half by one and a half inch strip and fold the sides in towards the center, to where they meet in the center. Press it with your iron. Then fold it in half again and press with your iron. Then stitch right along there to close it up, okay? Then set your loop aside. Now you're going to cut out your circles. Now I have a template here that I made that's five and a half inches in diameter. Okay, now remember, if you are using a really large towel, you're going to have to use a, a larger circle for the top, okay? All right, so place your batting down first, then your two pieces of fabric for the front and back of the circle. Place this down and then go ahead and trace around it. Then, before you cut it out, pin all of this together. Place pins around here. Then go ahead and cut it out. Okay? Now take one of your fabric circles. Okay and you're going to put the rickrack on. So, place your rickrack about an eighth of an inch from the raw edge of the circle. And you're gonna stitch right through the center of the rickrack, all the way around. Now when your two ends come together, 
uh, fold them over and pull them out a little bit as you stitch across there. Then you're going to put your loop on. Now the loop, I put the, t the side of the loop that has the stitching on it, so it's in the center here. So go ahead and just put, put your loop on, place a couple of pins to hold it down, okay? And then stitch across there to hold it down. Okay, now take your batting and your other circle that you've cut out Take the loop and place it down in the center going this way. Okay, so now you want that loop center to you. Then find your center points on the other side. Okay, going across there like that. Place pins here on each side. Okay, then continue pinning all the way around here, all the way around. Then stitch on top of that stitch line that's holding the rickrack on. So go from your first pin all the way around over to here. And go back and forth a few times at each side to secure that stitching. Then take it and turn it right side out, okay? And it's real easy to turn this out. Now set this aside, okay? Now we're going to work on the fabric border for the bottom of the towel. So this is what we're going to put together. Now I'm just going to use a few samples, little strips here to show you the process. So place a one and a half inch strip here and a one and a half inch strip there and a one and a half inch strip here. Now on each side of the strips of rickrack, you're going to stitch on your rickrack. Okay, just line it up along the edge there. So you've got all your rickrack stitched on. Then take your middle one here and lay it on top. And line it up on the raw edges there. Pin it down and then stitch right on top of the stitch line that's holding the rickrack on. Okay, so stitch right on top of that. Open it up. Then lay the bottom one on top of the middle one. Pin it down and again stitch right on top of that stitch line all the way across. Now go to the ironing board and you're going to start pressing this. And what's important is you want to press the rickrack so it is facing up and your seam lines are facing down. Okay? Now what I would do is I would start finger pressing it just a little bit. Okay, because it's a little tricky because of all that rickrack that's on there. Now, when you're using your iron, make sure you have it on the right setting because my rickrack is polyester. The fabric is cotton, so you need to set it to the low synthetic setting. And I had forgotten to do that, and my rickrack began to melt. So, make sure you have it on the right setting. So, press it all, all the way across. Then turn it over on the back, fold over the edge, and about a half an inch, and press that. Okay, now, take your towel and turn it over to the back. And you'll know it's the back because this is the side that had the label on it, and I've already cut that out. So take your border, and this is the binding on the towel. You're going to place this folded over edge here on top of that binding. Okay? Center it across. Now you're going to have a little bit of an overhang of fabric on each end. That's okay. Don't cut it off just yet. Just leave it there for now. Go ahead and line this up, covering up that binding. Pin it down all the way across and then stitch real close to the edge. All the way across. Now, Take that, ed, that uh, border and fold it back towards you, okay? Now you're still on the back of the towel. Now take your towel and flip it over to the front. Let me get another sample here. Okay, so. So now you're on the front of the towel. 
Your border is still on the back, fold it over towards the back. Now at each corner, you want to make sure that a little bit of your fabric border is sticking out past the edge of the towel. That's so that we have enough room for it to fold over easily later on. Go ahead and place a pin at each corner on the other side. Then at your sewing machine, you're going to stitch from this piece here, right here, down towards the fold line. Now don't sti stitch right next to this towel. Come out a little ways so that it will fold over easily. So you're leaving a little fabric all the way around that corner, okay? All right, so do that at both ends, then bring that border around to the front, okay? And if you're having a problem getting your points here, just take a straight pin and just insert it and kind of pull it out a little bit, okay? Now, continue folding it over. And as you fold it over, you want to pin down where the rickrack is. So placing pins on each row of the rickrack, on this one and this one, okay? And then fold over the edge here of the border to where it's even with the towel's edge and pin it down here. So everything's pinned down all the way around. Then you're going to stitch in the ditch. So you're going to stitch on top of the rickrack right next to the fabric and stitch right along there on all three rows. And then stitch along each side right here close to the edge. All right, good. Now that you're done with that, you're going to take your towel. I'm just going to, I ran out of green towel, so you're going to take your towel and fold it over in thirds like I have here, okay? Then take your circle template and find the center here, going from one side to the other. Then place the circle, this line right there, and then this line right there. So, okay, once you've got it lined up, then go ahead and draw around it. Now, it doesn't matter what you use because no one's going to see this line, okay? Then pin it down. Then go to your sewing machine and stitch. And I use just a large basting stitch. Stitch right along here. Again, no one's going to see this line. And make sure you use thread that you can see. Don't use white on white. Use some a little bit darker thread so you can see it. All right, now, here it is. After you've got it stitched, you're going to cut out that part of the towel, leaving about a half an inch, okay? Then take your... Um, circle that you made. It should look like this, okay? And insert the towel into it, like that. Now you're going to start pinning the circle down onto the towel. Take this edge, the lower edge of the circle, and bring it a little ways past that stitch line, just a little bit, and start pinning it down. Now let me show you on another one here. So you're going to pin it down, whoops, sorry, all the way around, making sure that this is just pulled past that stitch line a little bit. So pin it all the way around here. Now flip it over onto the back, and now you're going to uh, pin it on the back. Again, fold this in so that it just goes slightly past that stitch line there and pin it down all the way around here. Then go to the front and do your final stitching right along the edge here. Okay, now you're almost done. As I said, the button is optional. This one doesn't have a button. 
but this one does. So if you have some fabric where you don't want to cover it up with anything, you like what's on it, then you can leave the button off. Okay, this is just a decoration. But if you want to do the button, let me show you how to do that. So I have a four hole button and a two hole button. Okay, you're going to place the button in the center of the circle. Now the holes are going across like this. Turn it so that it goes like that. So you have horizontal and vertical, okay? Now with a needle and thread, come up through one of the vertical holes. Come up, go over and back down all the way through and keep going around and around about three or four times. Then come up through one of the horizontal holes come up through it, then come up through this hole and push it down. Then go through this hole, down through this hole, and go round and round and round three or four times. Then tie it off in the back, and that's how you get this little double button there. Okay, isn't this cute? Um, these make fantastic gifts for Christmas, birthdays, housewarmings, weddings, or just, just to be nice, okay? So they're a great little gift and they're very inexpensive to make. Well, I hope that that was helpful to you. Now my next video is going to be how to put fusible webbing onto letters and numbers to be used in machine applique. That's going to be a really fun and easy one to do. Now to keep informed on all my future videos, click on one of my subscribe buttons. There's one down there in the right hand corner, red, it says subscribe, and then at the end of the video you might see my picture floating around up here. That's also a su subscribe button. Click on either one of those, enter your email address, and YouTube will send you the e an email the next time I have a new video. You click on that email or button in the center and it takes you directly to my latest email. I'm Cheryl. I'm really glad you came to my sewing room. Now see you next time and happy sewing.